Hey, my lovely friends. So I've already created a few vocabulary video lessons with Dr. Jordan Peterson and Russell Brand. As always, I encourage you to think critically. Let's learn some words together. In the dragon fight story, the notion that you have to confront, confront what you're terrified of and repelled by. You have to do that voluntarily. The more assiduously you pursue that. Let's talk about the adverb assiduously. What does that mean? When you do something with great care, you are responsible. You don't cut corners. You are assiduous. You have done that task assiduously. And sometimes I ask students to submit their assignments and I notice that they have taken great care to do a phenomenal job. They have done their task assiduously. So Jordan Peterson is suggesting that we need to confront what terrifies us, what <laughs> makes us really scared, and even go towards things that repel us, drive us away. And he says, the more we do that assiduously, the bigger the treasure you garner, the bigger the treasure you garner. To garner is to acquire or obtain. And we typically use the word garner to talk about getting information or getting support. But he is using the word garner with the noun treasure to obtain that treasure, metaphorically speaking. If you garner the treasure, you're obligated to distribute it generously to the community. And he says that this is your moral responsibility. You are obligated to share it, to distribute it with the community generously. And it's all of that that makes up that central archetype of the hero. And this is a central archetype of the hero, which refers to the main characteristic, the quintessential trait of the hero. And that is the central unity, right? That unites the individual internally unites motivation and emotion and then unites each individual with the community. So he says that this creates a sense of cohesion, unity and bonding internally and externally. A sense that the hero cannot be mobilized or galvanized without that motivation. Let's talk about the verb galvanize, which means to excite someone, to simulate someone into action. And competent political leaders should be able to galvanize the public into taking effective action. Galvanize. That the fuel doesn't arrive until the hero it, it transcends from egoic motivation to uh, communal motivation. So Russell Brand is suggesting that the hero should be motivated motivated by something bigger than that self-centered desire. They should transcend the egoic or the egotistical drive. That, the, that when fueled by the ego, you cannot confront the dragon sufficiently. There's a few things that I want to pick up on. And this is this idea, if I may, sir, of uh, utility. That when we, ever, when we see other only in terms of utility, it's, it's obviously restrictive. But I would love to fold into this one of, the, um, uh, one of the things you taught us earlier in the conversation. The role of sex in our evolution, and indeed all of evolution, in order to introduce new complexity. If sex has such an epochal role... It Let's talk about the adjective epochal, which means highly influential and significant. Can. So here uh, he is suggesting that there is an epochal role that sex plays. This is a critical role that sex plays. In the evolution of our entire species, surely then it is connected to this consciousness that is ulterior to uh, uh, manifestation and materialization and therefore it's... So he says that consciousness or awareness is ulterior to precedes, it comes before. The role is almost archetypically significant. I also want to offer you this, if I may, well, regarding the Cain and Abel analysis. There has to be an ongoing tension between our the assertion of our roles as individuals. Uh, uh, the, we have to exist. I have to exist as Russell in the world. I have to know that it is Russell's mouth that I put food into rather than the mouths of others on the most basic biological level that i am indeed prime that my entire reality is subjective that is all i know of reality and yet i am aware of my insignificance somewhere within us there is some fractal interface between our relative insignificance so he says there is a fractal interface let's talk about the word interface which is kind of like a boundary and Fractal implies that there is something very complex and fractal elements repeat themselves. And he says that there is that boundary between our insignificance and our total omni, if not omnipotent, omniscience. But okay, if not omnipotent, which means all powerful, but omniscience, omniscience means all knowing. So there is that interface, that boundary between our in insignificance, which is very complex, by the way, this boundary, and our um, ability to at least be able to glimpse omniscience or all knowing or something bigger than 
our egoic or egotistical self. All reality takes place within my consciousness, yet materially I'm borderline irrelevant. Perhaps there is something of this Cain and Abel tension here. I believe that if people don't have a felt and personal subjective experience of God, whether that's from